Now for some reason, the event of LEGO and the event of paper sizes didn't talk to each other about how big the product should be. Because a standard A4 sheet of paper does not fit with LEGO at all. But in this video, you're going to see me coming up with a way to make it work. Oh, and I'm also going to turn it into a machine that takes a picture, then turns it into a bunch of lines, and then draws those lines in better quality than you could ever imagine. Probably. After that, I'm going to see if I can draw better than this machine, using this machine, in the air. So let's get back to the very beginning, the building. Alright, I won't make this long. Surrounding a piece of paper with Lego so that it doesn't move is actually difficult to do. I don't know why, but every single thing I tried just didn't fit by like the thickness of the fingernail. I initially started to build the entire platform for the sheet of paper, but when I realized it didn't fit, I decided to find a good fit first. When I finally found a perfect fit that didn't allow any movement, as soon as it turned it into a platform, for some reason it didn't fit anymore. It was the same size. After this, I found a way that kinda worked, and I just decided it was good for now. And in the end, I actually ended up just Clamping it on with some additional leg bricks. Yeah, I could have just done that from the beginning to be honest. Okay, let's get to the more serious bit. My plan for the drawing robot was to build like an X and Y axis around the paper with the pen moving through these components as well as raising and lowering the pen with an additional motor. At the back of the machine there will be a camera to take pictures. I built a first design for the Y axis but then realized that in order to have a strong and reliable mechanism you need to have the gears clamped around the gear rack because otherwise it can skip teeth. After rebuilding the Y axis I started building the X axis out of Technic frames but for some reason Technic frames have a very tiny bulge behind which other beams can snag. Who designed it? So I swept it out with Technic beams and made this moving device that moves side to side and I attached a pen that can move up and down with the circular movement. Now the machine can basically already draw, but it needs something to draw. For that we're going to use a phone to take pictures. I turned the phone into a Lego camera, added a button as a trigger and put it on a platform. Oh wait, this thing was designed to move. Let's swiftly move on from that. I will try to make it look prettier, just not right now. I once built a Lego automatic aiming turret using object recognition with a camera. Just like with this machine, it used a phone, a computer and mine films to work. But I had some problems with connecting it via Bluetooth. I ended up just using USB instead. But for this project, I wanted the machine to be wireless. So I looked into the problem once more and literally solved it with one line of code. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Although the coding isn't easy at all, I'm not going to bother you with all the nerdy problems I had to solve for this program. So instead, I'm going to show you what it does. This is a camera. This is a laptop. The camera sends video to the laptop via Wi-Fi. This is the code. This is the video. The code reads and shows the video on screen. While showing the video, it's also converting it to a drawing using edge detection. When you touch the button on the camera, the code waits for 4 seconds and then takes the current frame from the video and saves it as its reference image. The code now generates a long list of coordinates for all the lines in the image. After you confirm the image is good, it extracts all the useful data from the list and starts. At least in theory that is. Now I'm going to make this interesting. Instead of just turning on the machine and see it draw, I'm going to code an entire new program that allows me to draw in the air. Whatever I draw in the air, the machine will copy onto the paper so we can see how good it turns out. Then we're going to turn on the machine and compare the results to determine whether the machine is better at drawing or me. Here's how it works. I use this library that is already capable of tracking hands and had to code in the functionality. It picks a spot between my index finger and thumb and moves to that coordinate. When you pinch your fingers, it starts drawing. Now let's finally see if the machine holds up against my air drawing skills. Let's do this. And behind my back. Yes. Okay, let's go. Somewhere around here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, stop drawing. Stop up. Okay. <laughs> Actually, not bad. Oh, my God. Oh no 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 no! Oh, it's the wrong end. No, there's a line in the middle now. Oh no! All right, second eye. Oh no! Okay, it's stuck. Okay. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, good enough. Perfect. Beautiful. Nice and beautiful nose. Let's go. And the mouth. It is beautiful. I mean, it's kind of working. Oh no, let's see the result. Oh god. Alright, let's take a nice picture. So we're going to sit in front and smile. Alright, everything's set up for the video. All we need to do now is start the program.
So that's it. I think we have a clear winner. In all seriousness, I think this machine actually works great. And I think being able to control it with your hands as well makes it such an interesting and complicated machine. There's only one thing left to say. Thanks for watching. Oh, and also like and subscribe and stuff.